can't sneak that out anymore. <laughs> I, I, I always try and sneak as like recording. Or, okay, be on your best behavior, Dan. Just yeah. be recording. Um, uh, let me try and share my screen. Yeah, I got to open up in the preview. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm just excited that Sandy and Ashley. Give me one second, guys. Just getting screen share out. I want to get another one. Did you get a little Can you guys see her slide? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to go to leave this up or minimize it. She would be good. Okay, guys, let's get started. It's the top of the hour. Some people are going to hop on late. More on Zoom, I'm sure. And I think we have a few more coming in here in person. Um, so, just take a minute. Taylor's with Crew Landing. Um, Taylor, can you share your screen? Yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so Taylor's with Crew Landing. I don't really actually know Taylor. I'm meeting her for the first time. So, this is kind of cool. Um, Sydney with you with the Power Girls? Yes. Power, the Power Girls. The yeah. Power Girls dinner. Yeah, I think there's Actually, another one tomorrow night, yep. right? At tomorrow night at the Awesome. Yeah. So I like people that specialize. She specializes in new construction, yes. right? Um, always get a little bit better service when somebody really, really, really knows their product is the jack of all trades. So I'm excited to hear about this. And for you guys in other states too, um, she can do this nationally. So this does apply to you, not always do, do our uh, speakers, uh, are they able to help you out locally, but uh, you still learn what they have to present anyway. So her slides are up. I'm gonna turn over to Taylor, add any more introductions if you want to that, and uh, we'll get rolling. It will. So, it will. Well, but thanks for so jumping in. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come teach y'all and tell you a little bit about who I am and teach you everything construction. So um, just a little bit of background on me just to get started. I've been in lending since 2016. Um, mortgage specific lending since 2016. However, I've worked in a lending capacity since 2010. So a lot of experience with um, credit, all of that stuff. I can help credit or clients there as well. Um, overall, I have a husband, I have two kids, I have two dogs that drive me nuts. Um, we're new to Utah, we moved here two years ago. I'm from Florida, and yeah, I can lend nationally, and I love construction products. They're fun, they're interesting, and it's something that I've dabbled in and kind of specialized in. My husband um, and his dad used to do custom home construction, so kind of know everything that the builder is looking for as well on the lending side. So that helps bridge that gap a lot in regards to your clients because they have someone who can talk the same lingo and understand everything that the builder's saying too. So that's a little bit about me. Um, construction lending one-on-one. You can use the mouse only if right. I for that. Sorry. No, you're good. We're kind of casual, just keep going. <laughs> don't, don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Here. There, there we go. go. So a lot of questions that I get is, what is the difference between a new build mortgage loan and what is the difference between a construction mortgage loan? The main thing is, is how the builder is paid. Does the builder build spec homes and have them completely finished prior to the client closing? Or does the builder need their funds throughout the process of building the home? So that's your biggest difference of, okay, is this a retail mortgage product or is this truly a construction mortgage product? And we can help with both. Um, the construction mortgage loan, though, it, they get paid on a draw schedule and they have to do progress completions and everything to get paid and to continue to get paid. So that's the main difference. Does anybody have any questions so far? Is that builder specific, just how they prefer to do it? Yep. Some, it's really their overhead mm -hmm. and how they do it. Um, it's most common with custom construction projects, but there are some spec builders out there that prefer a custom construction mortgage versus a retail build project and then say, oops, okay, they don't qualify. They just built this home. They have to go find a buyer. So it just is really their preference. There it goes. So these are available construction loan programs. We have um, single time close, which is FHA and VA. So they can use that. Conventional, and we do have a portfolio jumbo. What's your interest on your jumbo? 
jumbo, it's dependent upon the loan to value percentage. So if they put more down, the lower the rate, they could actually potentially get a jumbo mortgage. They put like the 25% or 20% down, it'd be 4.25 is their construction rate, which is pretty good considering. <laughs> um, we have also an interim construction loan, which is a two-time close. And that's conventional, high balance and non-conforming. That's gonna be your jumbo. That's gonna be something out of the box that you can't really do a single time close on. Um, if we also do this with big renovation projects where it doesn't fit within your government or your um, home style renovation, we can do a two time construction loan on it and treat it the same. So it gives a little bit more flexibility to your clients. So there's a lot of information on here. You're gonna have this copy anyways. Um, but I kind of just wanted to share this for you, kind of go over some notes. All loans are made direct to the customer and closed prior to the start of construction. So they're closing on the exact, what their loan is going to be prior, unless they do a two-time close. What their loan is going to be, they're going to know what their, their payments are going to be, their interest-only payments prior to them even starting construction. Third-party builder land purchase transactions can be included. What that means is you can do a builder, can do the build, and they can buy land through real estate. So it doesn't have to be the builder owning and selling the land. You can purchase it from a seller and still do a builder all in one. Um, we do have what's called land in lieu of. So if they already own the land and they've had it, you can use that equity in that land and they can use that as part of their down payment and potentially not have to bring anything to closing. I had one that did it last year and they brought $1,100 to closing. What if they own the land and it's, uh, it, it's financed? You can still do that. We just pay off the first mortgage and whatever okay. equity outside of that, they can still use. Um, maximum of 10 acres. I don't think that's going to be an issue though right now. Um, gifted mm -hmm. land is acceptable as well. So say you bought land, you want to give to your children. You can do that and still use that equity in it. Interest only payments are made by the borrower during construction. They're only going to pay the interest only throughout the entire construction process, unless it is VA. VA borrowers are not allowed to pay interest only payments. I, um, interest me, I, I have a quick question for clarification. Yeah. And when you say they, are you talking about the builder or are you talking about the buyer or customer? I'm, I'm, I'm the, borrower, sorry. The, the buyer and the customer. The buyer, the buyer is the customer though, or the builder? It's the customer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I just, I've never done construction loans. And so I didn't know when you were saying they, I didn't know who they were. No, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad for the question. Okay, I'm happy you. to clarify anything on here as well. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the interest accrual is paid on this first loan funds through finance closing costs, land payoff, draw process, and monthly by the borrowers, the customer. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> I'll just keep going. <laughs> um, the construction fees that we charge are actually paid by the builder. And what that means is, for example, loan down payment option, draw fees, progress inspections, and date down endorsement fees. We're not charging the customer all those fees. That's going to be part of their construction process. So we require the builder do it. Now, more times than not, they will include it in their price. Sorry, somebody was saying that the waiting room wasn't letting them in, but it's open. So I'm not sure what's going on. I told you to ignore me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going. So distracting. <laughs> there we go. So, all construction transactions utilize a proposed construction appraisal. What this means is we're going to take the plan specs, or elevations and all of your, every, the cost breakdown that the builder puts together for the client, the design, ultimately. And we're gonna be turning that into an appraiser and they're gonna build basically that house digitally and give us an as improved, as completed appraisal value. Again, just has to be closed prior to construction in the beginning. Um, I'm your construction loan specialist, so that's actually the good thing. Every loan officer can typically do this. However, with all construction loans, having a construction loan specialist, well, I'm not for the company. So you don't have to worry about anybody else. You, you can go directly through me. Um, all construction files will be disclosed by us as well. So your client is getting direct information from me. 
They're not worrying about any misinformation provided between team members and companies. Um, we don't allow the borrower to be the builder. So if you're wanting to build your own home and you're a contractor, we don't allow owner build financing is what it's called. Um, property type single family residents are typically, we do that on all of our products and then secondary residents, um, conventional, really. And a two time close, one home per property allowed. So you couldn't build like three single family homes on a 10 acre lot. You could only still do one. You can do a guest home and mother-in-law suite, so attached to it. Um, if you have land and there's an existing structural unit on that property and you're wanting to build a whole new house, that existing structural has to be gone prior to completion before the final draw that the builder will get. Um, so all of that is in there. Electrical power is required to be available to the lot boundary. You would be very surprised how many questions I get that they don't want electricity. So very surprised. Um, you can do existing water and well, but they have to meet new construction guidelines. That means it has to be working for the home. So you can't allow that. And road maintenance, if basically there's a lot that people have joint access to, you may have to do a road maintenance agreement as part of your closing package. That's it. We're about to get into the fun stuff. I'm just kind of going over the basics. We kind of went over this. Um, so you can purchase from, this is all about your lot land situation. Purchasing from a builder contractor, third party, currently owned, and then gift a lot. Your CSD requirements are here though. So for FHA, you have to own the land for at least six months in order to use the equity into the land. VA, there's a 12 month land seasoning period. So you'd have to own it for you know, 12 months in order to use the equity into it. And the conventional is literally 24 hours. You can close on it yesterday, tomorrow, you have that entire equity in the property that's available. Any questions so far? No? Anybody on here? Okay. Um, so what you need to know to help your clients through the construction loan process my biggest thing that I always hear is people don't realize how long design plans and specs can take with the builder. If it is truly a custom home, it can take a little bit of time. I typically see those close in three to six months versus 30 to 45 days. Now, can we close in 30 to 45 days? Absolutely. You've got to have plan specs, design, elevations, all of that, because the appraisal can't be done without it. So having that understanding and kind of guiding them through that process and kind of backing us up helps out a lot. Um, and just knowing it, it's like a standard loan. It really is. The only difference is, is what me and the builder work with all the time. Other than that, it's, you still got your, um, conventional FHA, VA, your jumbo, all of that's the same guidelines. It's just the documentation with the builder and having that understanding, okay, there's a draw schedule, the inspections throughout the progress. Um, we actually don't release draws without the customer's approval. So if say they they go to request a draw and they've done a progress inspection and say they're requesting a little bit more than what they typically would have, we won't release it until the customer says, hey, we're good, we know what's going on kind of thing. And it just keeps them in the loop just knowing. And it's a quick email, it's not a long in-depth process. On the, sorry. Uh -huh, no, go on ahead. the plans and so forth that they submit, does it have to be, um, has to the city that they're building in. Does it have to be approved mm -hmm. by the city? Oh, no. So it's just there, and they'll pull permits and stuff like that too. As yep, as they go. We don't have to, we don't want to any of that. Like obviously they'll have to do it to progress. Um, and I'll go over kind of what that looks like with permits throughout the process. Um, what happens during the mortgage loan process that's different from a standard loan? So your pre-approval is important here too. So it's the same for the customer, but it is different for the builder. If the builder is not approved, they have to also be approved before you can move forward. Now they may have their own lender or anything like that. If that happens, give me a call because I promise you they'll love our flexibility in our programs. Um, 
once you have that, they go under contract, builders approved, we're ready to go, then you're really moving into a design plan specs and elevations process. And this is really the only time consuming upfront piece because we can't order the appraisal without that. So you're kind of at a standstill until you can get all those items in. And sometimes that's for the customer and the builder just kind of hashing out what their dream home is. You're, the biggest thing that I see is we're, we're typically like a right now, okay, you have this home, we're selling it now as is. With building a home, you're selling a vision. You're selling what they can see and what they're going to have later. Um, and that's kind of a they, and sometimes their head will get really big on their vision and you have to bring them back down to it just to get it lined up with budget and everything like that. But so that's kind of the difference. That's kind of like your pre-approval going under contract process. Then once you have everything, you're going into order the appraisal that as completed, it'll come up and say per plans and specs on the appraisal. So it'll be subject to completion of um, plans and specs. And then after that, we're going in, we're going in for a resubmittal. Um, at this time, I actually work with the builder and I do draw schedules. So I create their draw schedule for them. The great thing that builders love is we can pay them up to twice a month. So they can literally get a draw every two weeks. So they like that. Some only like four draws throughout the entire process. It really just depends on their preference, but we do have that flexibility to design it for them how they want it. Um, the builder will sign off on it, and so will the borrower, the customer. Once all that's done, we get a clear to close. We actually, there's a two to three day waiting period for construction and attorney documents for closing. And that's just, those are legal contracts between the builder, us, and the customer, because they have timelines that they have to meet, the builder does, in order to completion for guidelines, all of that. So that's kind of just getting that legally found, they know, the client knows if any penalties and stuff like that. So you're closed, you got your construction attorney docs already out, they've signed everything. And then there's construction modification that's like way on the back end. And I'm gonna go in between in a minute. And that's just where they take that mortgage. So that 4.25% that I said on that jumbo loan, they can now go and float down that rate after their home's completed to what the market rate is at that time. You know what's even better? We're not selling off that loan, we wanna keep that loan. So our rates are very competitive to what the market rate is at that time. And they don't have to pay any fees. They don't have to re-qualify or anything like that. We do pull a new verification of employment to make sure they're employed. Um, and they don't have to go through a refinance process to get their rate into a fixed flat rate at the end, like a lot of companies will do. How often do you get the rates down? Like most of the time? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we've had one that hasn't been over. We just have to qualify them on that interim construction rate, and then they get to flip down. The only reason why we wouldn't is if there was a big jump between now and next year, because they have a 12-month construction period. I got a question. So yeah. you're, you're talking about fees and rates and whatnot, and most builders like their relationships with their lenders. Yeah. They're not always the best on customer service for the Mm -hmm. buyer though they they tend to work for the builder right um but they offer incentives so when talking to a client about the incentives offered by a preferred lender versus you guys having compared customer service it pays it even though we can look at what the other lender is doing and see if we can compete with it match it whatever it's the customer service they're not going to go through a round table they have somebody right there walking them through it. They're not going through five people. Everything is in-house. We don't sell these off. We don't have outside companies doing the construction management. None of that. That is all our company. Nice. That's the huge thing specifically there is because a lot of times they'll have six, seven people involved. You're dealing with two, typically. Can I uh, say something real quick about that? Yeah, absolutely. My husband and I are in the middle of building a custom home right now. So we have a new construction loan. And I want to say why I was drawn to Taylor when I met her is because just that point she just said right there was huge. We have like seven people involved with our file. We can never get a hold of anyone. And then as soon as we closed, it transferred to someone new we'd never talked to. So hearing her say that, it's super refreshing just from like a consumer standpoint as well. And that's the biggest difference between us and the other lenders that you'll see. Um, so your clients just closed on their construction loan and the house is starting to be built. Now what? 
Now what happens to them? Because they're kind of like, what do I do? So the initial draw is released to the builder and construction starts. Their interest only payments also start immediately that next month. They're only paying interest. They're not paying any principal, none of their escrows, any of that. That starts. Um, and then progress updates, title updates, and progress inspections are going to be completed based on the builder's draw schedule that they had done and their progress. They should also be providing these inspections to you or to your clients whenever they are in the middle of the construction process. If they are not, you can always let us know and we can provide those progress inspections for you too. Um, the final certificate of occupancy is there. You get that. We release the final draw. So something that is really good, we automatically hold 10% of the builder's cost as a reserve. We do not release that to them until and it's not every draw it's just right off the top and we release it all once that final certificate of occupancy is released and they've provided their documents needed any questions so far i, right. I have a question this kathy here um does the build, hi does the builder have when they get like twice a month draws from from you do they have to have a certain progress um certain tasks, certain things done by that progress date or if, that two weeks time to get in order to get those draws? Or yes, they like if they end up choosing that option, um, a lot of them do, do typically do at least, I, I see typically at least once a month, if not further out, but they do have that option. If they do, they do have to provide progress updates okay. and keep us informed the entire time of what that progress, provide proof that it's being completed. Because we're not going to just keep giving them money if they're not doing anything with it or progressing the process. That's what I was wondering. Okay, that's yep. that point. Thank you. So they do have 12 months to complete construction right now. That has been a wonderful, um, sarcastic, obviously, pain. Um, just because of cost and lumber permits were getting delayed and stuff like that, it is getting a little bit better. The lumber cost is not. Um, but after that's all done, you're saying you're at 12 months. I see typically nine to 10 um, on most of my construction. They can go into this. It's within two weeks of the construction being completed and the certificate of occupancy being released. The flip down option is available for the permanent loan modification. So they do have to complete it within two weeks. If they choose not to do the modification and they don't jump on it within that two weeks, they could potentially be stuck in that interim construction rate the entire time of their mortgage or have to refinance. They're not gonna know to do that. So somebody on your team. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. We let them know as soon as we get it, we reach out to them. I'm also getting notification too. Um, it's gonna be me or the construction manager who does the draws, either her or I. Um, it is equal to the current par rate available at the time of modification. Rate selected below the current market rate will incur a discount point. So you do have the option to buy down your rate too, which a lot of people didn't realize. Um, the free interest rate flip down options, again, expires two weeks, and then the modification must be completed timely and within the two week period. And really, if there's a delay that's on our end, we're not gonna hold that against them. But if they're jumping on it, we can get it done within the two weeks and they're good. So what if they don't get that 12 month mark? Um, the builder is actually charged a fee and it is, I haven't had it happen yet. We just changed it. It's the, uh, 0.275 extension fee for each time they extend. So it doesn't affect mm -hmm. our buyers? Nope, it affects the builder. And how long is that extension again? Um, it's 12 months exactly from the day of closing. That's me. <laughs> so I'm going to open it up to questions. What do you have for me? Do you all run into construction loans a lot? Um, it's from time to time in this market now. we got to move more to new construction, but most yeah. of at least my clients are looking for something that's ready to move in and it's yeah. done. Or maybe it's already built, even if it's a mm -hmm. new lender. So. Uh, it's maybe less than 10% of my volume, maybe 5%. Okay. But it's good to know. I mean, with this kind of stuff, um, obviously it's not, sorry, it's not super exciting. No, <laughs> but, yeah, I get it. But we got to know what our <laughs> options are, right? And our clients actually need to know who to call to ask questions. So this is 
this is good info and uh, you know it's a good contact to help yeah. them through. Yes, ma'am. So I, I maybe I missed this part, or maybe I didn't understand it. So mm -hmm. you're doing the construction loan with the builder mm -hmm. and the client and the client. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the construction, does that does that loan just do they have to do anything else? So so it's handled. Yep. Until loan modification. Now they'll have to approve the, uh, approve the draws as the builder requests them. We'll reach out to them, ask right. them to approve the draws. But really, no, they don't have to do anything else. As long as it's a one-time close, they're good. Oh. If it's a two-time close, they do have to re-qualify. And if they go over, I mean, if they add extras and stuff, then what's the process there? They'll end up, we can't adjust it. Once so it, there's no adjustment. Mm -hmm. Okay. They would end up paying that out of pocket. Okay. I do have some builders that will build in a contingency just for that. So that way they can find it, finance it up front. And then if they do have a change order, then great. They can just pull it from the contingency that they're, we don't um, regulate or, you know, um, moderate or anything, their contingency. It is all up to the builder. So that that's a trust between the builder and the client, to be honest, because they're going to be managing it, not us on the contingency yeah. part. Especially on the custom homes when they, you know, mm -hmm. they start picking about, about uh-huh and that's what i see a lot is they'll get into the design and they're like oh i want this and yes. i want this and i want this so you're talking about during the process yes. they already thought they knew what they wanted and then, and then start yes building. it's like oh shit i scared on that i'm gonna have to have up yeah the and so i didn't something. know if they had something in that loan for that or they don't only unless they go ahead and build it in with the builder as a contingency and i honestly highly recommend a contingency yeah. especially with the cost of increase they can go ahead. And, yeah, I mean, it's just 10 per, it, whatever the builder does. Most of my builders that do it do at least 10 to 15 percent. And we had one that it severely helped out with. They had a $35,000 change order due to the county miscalculating. Um, it was like the elevations, and they had to build up more dirt than they were expecting. And it was a $35,000 change order. And thankfully, they had it in contingency. Otherwise, he didn't have the funds. It was a VA client. He didn't have the funds. He works overseas a lot. And he would have had to go out and get a personal loan because you can't modify the construction loan at that point, especially the VA and FHA one time close. Okay. So you can build it in there. And then if they don't use it, then they're not financing it, right? Correct. The builder just. Okay. Puts it back, we put it as a principal reduction on their loan. So, is that something you actually guide the buyer through mm -hmm. on? Because they don't want to find out about that later and say, why didn't somebody tell me? I always <laughs> have that conversation with the client because I've seen it used so many times right now. So, as long as they qualify, it comes out that you would need just that contingency, you can add it basically yep. whatever you want. It's yep. really, really hard to control the prices right now for a builder. For sure. Everything yeah. is going up. Everything. Well, and the main thing is you want to make sure that it all prays with the contingency too. That's correct. So Taylor, like, that's actually a question I had is um, with the appraisal. Can you explain kind of how that works? Because like when you get the loan, they do an appraisal and then after it's built, like with the custom homes more so, they do another appraisal. And then how does that work if say the appraisal comes in significantly higher? Do you get money back type of a thing? No, you do not. You just have that equity built into your loan at that time. And then, so say our programs, our construction conventional, this is a really good one here, is they can do as little as 5% down on a custom construction loan. Mm -hmm. We can do five. And so if they have something where it comes in significantly higher, we can look at it and we can consider taking that PMI off. So Sherry, what do you see them from start to finish as far as material price increases during the process? It's, Sherry specializes in construction. So. Oh, good. Okay. It's it's crazy right now. I mean, every lumber is kind of they have it hasn't come back down, but it's kind of settled down. But we're talk, it, it we're talking tile, we're talking appliances, we're talking elect electrical equipment. I mean, everything is just doorknobs. Yes, so, so, everything is getting inflated. So what are you seeing when they, they, they think they're going to pay a certain amount for the house and then they start constructing it and then materials change? I mean, can you count on a certain percentage? Or? So what I so what we've had to do is we've had to put an addendum together. And in that addendum, we're having to say if the prices. So, so they pick something out, we've given them a price. 
when we go when they go to order it, if it's gone above five percent, then we go back to them and say the builder can't absorb this. So do you still want it? Do you want it? Do you want to find something that's less, or do or do you want to pay the addition? And that's right in the addend. We had to start putting sure. those in the addendums now. So that's where that contingency thing would come in. Is yeah. To allow yes. for that, yeah. Which is pretty much a given, isn't it? Right now. It's but yeah. You, something's going up. Yes, I yeah. mean, it, but even the, not even that. It's even getting the material here right now is hard. The material, the biggest delay I've seen is in windows, windows, so, doors, and permits as well. Yeah. Those three are the biggest delays that I've seen recently. Yeah, I was shocked. My husband's an electrician, and overnight, like materials, he went in, he did a bid the day before, and the next day he went to go purchase the materials, and he it doubled. Yeah, overnight. it's, it's, went, it's not a little bit, yeah, it's yeah. huge. And say like, I'm sorry, overnight, literally mm. doubled. Yeah. And they were like, oh, let's hold on for a couple weeks, you know, and so that's just kind of what you do with that. Well, I've got people that ordered appliances a year ago and still hasn't been able to get it because COVID shut down the production. You know, it's the same backlog, thing. With, yes, everything's yeah. blacklog. And yeah. same with your cars. I mean, you can't get cars because of the chips. I mean, it's just a, the building. It's a domino effect yeah. right now. Yeah. So it, it does help um, with having the flexibility to, like, say, if they need to, you know, pull a draw for this instead of this now because of the backlog, as long as it doesn't affect basically the progression, you can obviously bypass the siding on that exterior and stuff like that till you have windows and yeah. so but I those are the biggest things that I've seen is the lumber increase has been significant mm -hmm. the doors windows and permits have been the biggest delays so I have a question um, from your ex like personal experience um who are some builders that you've like really loved working with that you like are like my top Whatever. And then I want to know the shitty ones too. And I'll, I'll yeah. turn off. Yeah. 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 I was going to say that, but I was like, I'm not a pessimist. Let, let's start with no. the positive. Yeah. 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 So I am part of Salt Lake Home Builders HBA. I've talked to a ton of them. Um, I do have some preferences of people I wouldn't like to work with. And again, we'll have that side conversation on that one. Um, I do like Edge Homes, though. They've been great to work with. I've worked a couple of them. Um, do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why you like pop up. Um, mm -hmm. I do like them. Um, there's, um, I, you put me on the spot now, no, so I can't say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, there's a few, um, like just in that they have really good best practices or like good procedures that you're like, if, if there was a client choosing between like edge and I'm not even going to, I don't even know. But like that you would be like 100% go with this, you know. Well, I think also the builder has something that also it's where they want to live. The neighborhood. The neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, that's What's kind of where I'm going. Like yeah. putting on that like everywhere. I could tell you places in Park City that I would absolutely love, but would yeah. not even touch here okay. or places here at Daybreak. Mm -hmm. I can honestly break it down like area and email it over to you which ones I like in each area. So you can have a yeah, yeah, I'll do that and then I'll tell you the ones that I like. <laughs> and you can share and I'll just yes. make sure to yes. cross out my name. And... So, yeah. so yeah. do um, do you, are you sharing your information with us? How we get Absolutely. Out? Yes. Okay. And I have cards and everything. Okay. So, um, you yeah. had your information on the previous slide, didn't you? I did. I can you back it. that up a little bit. Yep. Take it. And I'll, I'll get everybody a copy of these slides too, so you'll have that. But take a picture of that if you want. Thanks. And I have cards. I did bring cards for everybody here. Yeah. Well, not here for you. What area code is eight five zero? Florida. Florida. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of like South Carolina. It's like we're playing. I heard poker. a little accent, right? <laughs> Everybody hears my accent. <laughs> my first, that's normally my yeah, first conversation. Yeah. Everybody's like, so we can tell you're not from here. Um, and I have more. I'll drop out some more up there. And, but yeah, any more so questions? Taylor, I have a question, Taylor. Yes, ma'am. I'm always, I'm always one for questions. Um, yeah, that's fine. 
uh, you said you're national. So in Spokane, Washington, do you have a, uh, do you have a separate staff or something in Washington, or or do you just do everything from where you're located out there? Just everything from where I'm located here, and okay. um, I'm in South Jordan. So uh, South South Jordan, where's that? Utah. Oh, Utah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can do everything just from my office. I can help anybody. We have a great team behind us, also. Um, so, I have so, so there's not. So there's not somebody that we would contact here in Washington, somebody lo more local to us up here? I can find you someone more local to you. Okay, that's what I mean. It's, yeah, uh, we, we have, have branches all over, so okay. I can find you someone. Um, okay. If you want to, I'll get your information where you're located, and I can send you over someone over there that's more local okay. to you. Okay, well, you have, you, you, uh, Jeff's got my email address. So, okay, thank you. Uh -huh, anytime. <laughs> Anything else? Any questions? Anybody else on Zoom have anything? Sherry's <laughs> sure done. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. No, that was, that was good. good. Thank, Thank you. you. And very knowledgeable. Absolutely. And I have some information here. I'm not one of those where I say, hey, email me all your questions, or I'm only available. If you have a question and it's in the evening time and you know you're going to forget it tomorrow, text it to me. Call me. I can't answer. I'll tell you I can't answer and why. I am very big about that. I'm not going to just ignore your call and not call you back. I'll at least text me and say I'm in a meeting or I'm at dinner, whatever it is. Should be over your question. I'm happy to answer it at any time for y'all. Okay. Awesome. Good info. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks for having me. You you ripped fast. Yeah. <laughs> like, Sorry, wow. do I need to slow down? No, um, no, that's no, good. What else can I add? <laughs> Anybody else on Zoom have any questions? Let me uh... Thanks, Taylor. Super, super good stuff. Anytime. Thank you. And then for those that are here, I think there's something that's real. Let me see what we got in the chat. Okay, good, good. Well, good seeing you all. We're a little bit uh, ahead of schedule. This is new for me. No, that's good. See, I'm coming back next month, so then you'll just be ready. Fast talker. Awesome. No, it's good. You only need to cover what you cover. If there's no no questions, then we're good. Jeff, are you having another meeting or something after this? Um, yeah, at noon. I'll, I'll probably shut off Zoom for right now and then turn it back on at noon if you want to jump back on. Um, at noon is when we're doing we're doing the EXP overview. We have a couple people here in the office. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I don't need to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll turn that back on. Um, it, it, anybody just jump back on this same link if we're just going to kind of go over the brokerage model. But for us here that are in person, um, Taylor was kind enough to bring us lunch. So we're going to have some lunch. Yes. And you guys go make a sandwich or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Good seeing y'all. Reach out if you need anything. Yeah,